Nick Marshall is an advertising executive from Chicago. He grew up with his single showgirl mother in Las Vegas. As a result, all of his life, Nick was surrounded by women and he's never had a shortage of women's attention, which has turned him into a chauvinist who thinks of himself as God's gift to women. Nick was married to a woman named Gigi and has a 15-year-old daughter named Alex with her. Gigi has recently married a guy named Ted, while Alex doesn't have a good relationship with Nick because of his lack of interest in her life. Nick has a host of other women in his life that add color or trouble to his life like his maid Stella, his crush Lola who works at his favorite coffee shop, and many others. Nick is very good at his job, and he is very skilled at selling products to men. Although he knows how to seduce and attract women, his knowledge of women's psyche is only surface level. With women becoming the fastest growing consumer group in the U.S., Nick's abilities and skills are fast becoming obsolete. It finally hits him when he learns that his boss Dan is hiring a woman named Darcy McGuire for the position of the company's new creative director, a post that Nick was sure was his. Darcy is one of the most successful creative directors in the field of advertising in the country and has a reputation for being a man-eater. At her wedding reception, Gigi tells Nick that she is going on a two-week-long honeymoon with her new husband and asks him to take care of their daughter Alex till she comes back from her honeymoon. Nick also learns that Alex has an 18-year-old boyfriend, Cameron. Nick doesn't approve of his daughter having a boyfriend, but Alex couldn't care less as Nick has never really been present in her life. On her first day at work, Darcy vows to help the firm tap into the woman's consumer market and gives all the employees a box of feminine products, asking them to come up with ideas to sell those. The kit contains an anti-wrinkle cream, mascara, moisturizing lipstick, bath beads, quick dry nail polish, waxing kit, pregnancy test, and many other things. At home, Nick tries to come up with ideas to sell lipstick to women, but he can't produce any ideas. To get into the female psyche and to get his creative juices flowing, Nick raids his daughter's bag and plays a pop CD from it. One by one, Nick uses the feminine products trying to come up with ideas while drinking alcohol. As Nick tries the Wonder Bra, Alex walks in with her boyfriend Cameron. Embarrassed to see her father in women's garments, Alex sends her boyfriend back home and gets on her father's case for going through her stuff. Nick tries to explain himself, but Alex gets upset with him for always disregarding her feelings and wishes. After Alex goes to bed, Nick continues brainstorming ideas for the ad campaigns and ends up drunk out of his mind. As a result, Nick accidentally slips and falls into his bathtub while holding an electric hair dryer. The dryer shocks him, and he is knocked unconscious. The next day, Nick wakes up to his maid cleaning up his room. He overhears her thoughts about the mess he has made around the room. Stella is a bit taken aback by Nick hearing her thoughts, but he doesn't think much of it. As he walks through the park and encounters numerous women, Nick realizes that he is able to hear women's thoughts, and even those of a female poodle. One woman on the street is worried about the coffee maker she left on, while another is worried about becoming someone else after making out with a girl. It gets worse at work when Nick learns how his female co-workers really feel about him. One woman calls him a schmuck, while another mocks his appearance. Nick's thought reading power reveals that a woman named Darren wants to take her own life, while Nick's Ivy League secretary, Annie, is not happy running menial errands for him, which she sees as degrading. To take revenge on the firm, Annie uses the company's phone to call her boyfriend in Israel. Nick is overwhelmed by women's unkind thoughts about him and he frantically looks for a doctor's number, but his co-worker Morgan drags him to the scheduled meeting. At the meeting, Nick uses his abilities to hear women's thoughts to impress Darcy. When he returns home from work, he walks in on his daughter making out with her boyfriend. Angry, Nick asks Cameron to leave, which further enrages Alex, and she says horrible things about Nick and her thoughts. After Alex leaves with her boyfriend, Nick, fed up with women talking trash about him in their head, again tries to electrocute himself back to normalcy, but without success. The next morning, Nick seeks the help of his marriage therapist, Dr. Perkins, who also seems to hate him. At first, she doesn't believe him, but he's able to prove to her that he can hear her every thought. However, instead of helping him get rid of the gift, Dr. Perkins makes him realize that he is the luckiest man on earth for being able to decipher what women want. She tells him that he could rule the world with his gift. Armed with that new perspective, Nick entices Lola, who always refused his advances before. He says everything she wants to hear and convinces her to go on a date with him. Meanwhile at work, Nick begins to develop real friendships with his female coworkers. He asks Annie to give his greetings to her boyfriend in Israel and helps Aaron with her files. He also learns through Darcy's thoughts that she is secretly working to secure Nike's project and offers to help. During their conversation, Darcy learns that Nick has a daughter who is about to go to prom. She notes how the prom dress is a big deal for girls. After returning home, Nick comes home to find Alex with her two friends, talking about prom. He greets Alex's friends who initially hate him for being a deadbeat dad, but he quickly changes their opinion by offering to take Alex shopping for her prom dress. 
he also apologizes to Alex for overreacting earlier. Later, Nick takes Lola out and uses his powers to create the perfect date for her. Afterwards, he goes over to Lola's house to make love. He initially finds himself unable to do the deed properly because he keeps hearing her criticizing his every move. But after collecting himself, Nick makes love to Lola like no one ever. Impressed by his skills, Lola calls him in her mind a love god. Nick begins spending more time around women's spaces and continues to hone his skills of understanding and reading women. Nick also starts spending more time with Darcy. He steals Darcy's ideas from her thoughts before she even puts them in words. This amazes Darcy as no other man has been able to read her mind and heart like Nick, and she begins to wonder if she is catching feelings for him. Nick's relationship with his daughter also begins to improve after he helps her find a prom dress for her prom dance. He is finally able to bond with her, but soon things go south. Nick suspects that Alex's 18-year-old boyfriend only wants to sleep with her before dumping her. He carefully tries to give her parent talk about not doing it if she's not ready and waiting for the right guy, but she doesn't have any of it. She tells him that she appreciates him buying her the dress, but he has no right to suddenly be an overprotective dad after being absent from her life for 15 years. At work, Nick exploits Darcy's feelings for him, and it works perfectly fine at first. But as he spends more time with Darcy, he finds himself being attracted to her. One night after a dinner date, the two kiss. Later that night, Nick finds Lola outside his apartment complex. Lola is heartbroken and distraught about Nick not calling her since they made love. Nick regrets putting Lola through this, and to save her feelings, he tells her that he is gay, and if he was straight, he would have married her. This gives Lola a sense of relief, and she returns home happy. On the day of the presentation, Nick, feeling guilty about stealing Darcy's ideas, asks Darcy to make the pitch to the Nike team, but Darcy insists that the ad campaign is his idea, and he should make the pitch. Before the meeting, Nick learns that Erin is thinking about ending her life in the next few days, and it was Nick who turned down her promotion, because of which Erin has been stuck in the same position at the firm for two years. The presentation impresses the representatives from Nike, and Nick's firm wins the contract. Nick gets all the credit, but he starts to feel bad about himself and what he's doing to Darcy. He not only sees the error of his ways, but the error of men's ways towards women in general. A remorseful Nick proceeds to write a letter to Darcy admitting everything he has been doing, but Darcy interrupts him and takes him to her newly bought home. Darcy is elated about the home and she makes out with Nick inside her home. Afterwards, Nick meets his boss, but only to learn that Dan has promoted him to the position of creative director and fired Darcy. Dan says he made a mistake by hiring Darcy because she didn't even open her mouth during the Nike presentation, making Nick feel even worse. Nick reveals that the Nike ad campaign was actually Darcy's idea, and he asks Dan to get Darcy back. Nick also proceeds to go find Darcy himself, but he learns that Aaron, the office secretary who wanted to end her life, has not shown up for work and hasn't called in sick either. Fearing the worst, Nick goes to Aaron's home hoping to stop her. On his way to Aaron's home, Nick witnesses an electrical explosion while standing in the rain. Nick finds a suicide letter in Aaron's home, but fortunately, she hasn't gone through with it. Aaron is surprised to see him. To save her from embarrassment, Nick tells her that he came over to check up on her and to offer a promotion, much to Aaron's joy. While talking to Aaron, Nick realizes that he's not hearing her thoughts anymore, and he concludes he lost his gift. Afterwards, he goes over to Darcy's home, but he is not able to reach her and leaves. Nick then receives a call from a worried Gigi who reveals that Alex was very upset on the phone with her before she went out of contact. Worried, Nick swiftly goes over to Alex's prom dance looking for her. He finds her crying in the hotel washroom. He gets her to open up and she reveals that her boyfriend broke up with her after she told him that she is not ready to make love. Nick tells her that he is proud of her for standing her ground and that alone puts her ahead of most people in the game. Comforted by her father's words, Alex finally stops crying and she goes back home with him. He puts her to bed and goes over to Darcy's in the middle of the night again. This time he finds her at home and confesses everything to her. He tells her that he had been stealing ideas because he was upset that she took the job he was supposed to get and that Dan wants her back at the office. He also confesses his feelings about her. Darcy is shocked by the revelations. At first she is at a loss for words and when she finally speaks, she tells him that she's firing him. Nick didn't see it coming but he realizes he deserves it and accepts it. When Nick proceeds to leave, Darcy tells him that she also forgives him and agrees to save him from himself. Elated, Nick calls her his hero, and the two kiss.